In December of 2009, uh, ACOG revised its recommendations for cervical cancer screening for doing the pap test. Uh, this was the first major revision since 2003. Uh, and the changes are not dramatic, uh, but some of them are significant. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the previous uh, guidelines recommended starting screening about three years after the onset of intercourse or age 21. The new guidelines recognize that cervical cancer is exceedingly rare in women under age 21, in the neighborhood of one to two per million. Uh, it was felt that it was not uh, uh, effective uh, use of resources to uh, screen that many thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, of, of teenagers to pick up one cancer, especially since over the years we have seen that no matter how we recommend the screening, the incidence stays about the same. There are about 14 new cancers uh, in teenagers per year nationwide. So the new recommendation calls for starting screening at age 21, uh, no matter how long a, a young woman has been sexually active. From age 21 to age 29, the recommendation is to have a pap test every two years. Uh, this is a change from the previous, which was every one year. Um, and from age 30 uh, until sometime after menopause, generally 65 to 70, the recommendation is to go with uh, pap screening every three years. Uh, the uh, practice committee uh, recognized that uh, there is no real difference in sensitivity or specificity between liquid-based pap tests and the conventional pap smear. Uh, it was also uh, recommended that uh, in women over the age of 30, it's acceptable, acceptable, not, not recommended, not preferred, but it's acceptable to do both pap screening and an HPV test uh, as a screening test for uh, cervical dysplasia and cancer. This should not be done in women under age 30, and if both the pap test and the HPV test are negative, Screening should not be repeated for another three years at least. Also, a pap test alone is perfectly acceptable in women over age 30. Women who've had a hysterectomy and it was not done uh, related to cancer and uh, the woman has no previous history of CIN 2 or 3 or worse, hasn't been treated for previous dysplasia, uh, is not immunocompromised, uh, was not exposed to diethylstilbestrol, DES in utero, these women don't need pap tests anymore. A woman who has had CIN 2 or 3 in the past, or cancer, uh, remains at increased risk for, for cervical dysplasia over the general population for at least the next 20 years and needs to have screening pretty much on an annual basis. Women who uh, are HIV positive, women who, have, uh, who, who are significantly immunocompromised, should have uh, two pap tests the year that their HIV is diagnosed, and then every year thereafter in compliance with the CDC recommendations. So the new guidelines are a little bit different. Uh, the shift from uh, three years after the onset of intercourse to not screening before age 21 uh, is going to be perhaps the biggest change in many people's practices. Um, but the overall changes are uh, modest, uh, they're incremental, uh, and they will help us provide the best uh, cervical cancer prevention uh, for our uh, women patients.